Okay, this video here will just take a, our final look at um, our brick parapet situation. So pre in a previous video, we looked at brick at main floor, and then another video, we looked at a brick at a at a second or third floor or whatever, and now we'll look at the brick at parapet. Now, what I've drawn in the detail that you're going to see is that they've put a shelf angle here at the roof level. I've left that out. Um, certainly, it's good practice to do that, but certainly um, you could take it out, and the load of these bricks could easily um, transfer to that shelf angle right there like you you know depending how tall your parapet is obviously but you're not you're not adding a lot of brick in your typical parapet um, you know to, to create too much of a load down onto that shelf angle so in the detail i show um, um, i'm not showing that shelf angle basically but you certainly could put a shelf angle right there um, as we did on um, the second floor video and here's that uh, outcome of that video here and really so what you would do at the roof level is no different than what you do right here and so yeah just a quick load on what, what we've got here and you know overall i would consider this a, a, a very good parapet detail very sound so um, steel structures there's a steel beam open web steel joists um, there's the stud wall right there so we've done a, a semi bypass system again where we've extended the the uh, joist seat out and that that pretty much you know breaks the parapet stud wall from the stud wall down below which is a, a good approach and I'll get to that later um, got the metal deck right here okay there's no concrete on that metal deck so typically on a roof you wouldn't do the the concrete um, fill over top of the decking and we've done a full outside insulated system with a brick veneer here I've, I've drawn in a a soldier course there just for fun and let's just take a look at what we've got going on here with the roof so um, I've shown so here's the metal deck and I've shown a roof board right there so it's like a sheathing board basically and on top of the sheathing board is our air and vapor barrier so I've done a conventional roof system here where the roof membranes exposed on the top so the purple line represents that air and um, vapor barrier um, it's a good idea, good practice to put that on a sheathing board basically so that you have a nice flat surface uh, for that to sit on. It, you know, I've seen cases where it's, the board is not there and then basically the, you know, the membrane, the, mem the air vapor barrier does that. So, you know, easier to get holes in it and stuff like that as you're working on the roof. So, putting the board down is certainly um, good practice, but not 100% required. So again, um, air um, vapor barrier there, and the this insulation here, I'm showing as a polyiso insulation, and so this is a very typical um, conventional roof assembly right here, uh, where we're seeing the air and uh, vapor barrier. Hopefully, on top of a sheathing board, it looks like it is because I don't see it draping through uh, the flutes of the decking, and then in this case, there's three three layers of a polyiso insulation right here. And in this case, it looks like they've got a TPO roof membrane on top. You can see where it says TPO right there. So um, the very, 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 very um, common roof assembly type. But you'll notice I've drawn something a little bit different here. So again, the, the bluish color there is the poly ISO insulation. And what I've done here is I've put a layer of uh, mineral wool insulation on top of that. Why did I do that? If you just Google RDH Labs conventional roof study, you will find a study that was done by RDH Labs. And if we just view that document, um, you'll see a document where they've studied the, the conventional roof where it's all polyiso. Then they studied a roof where it was all mineral wool. And then they studied a hybrid roof and, and looked at the performance of them. So it's, it's a really good read. Um, I would highly recommend reading that if you're interested. It also gets into actually roof membrane color as well. But in a nutshell, what it's going to tell you is that polyiso um, isn't super stable in extreme temperatures of hot and cold. Okay, so it's it's got some um, characteristics that that you know that aren't um, ideal, I guess, in that insulation in extreme hot and extreme cold, which is our environment in in Alberta. Um, you know, in the summertime, this roof membrane gets very very hot. And in the wintertime, it can get very, very cold. So the idea here is, you know, they studied the full um, mineral wool roof type, and it was quite stable. Um, of course, the downside, though, is that you get more R value out of a polyiso than you would out of a 
mineral wool. So then the last roofing they studied was, well, why don't we do both? Like, why don't we put the more stable, the insulation that's more stable in the extremes, in the environmental extremes, why don't we put that insulation on top to create a bit more of a um, controlled environment or more, you know, a, a less extreme environment for the less stable insulation. So it's, it's actually a really good idea. So that's what that whole study is kind of about. And so I think it's a, a really good approach to do one layer of the mineral wool and then the under layers um, of, you know, the, the more stable one on top and then the under layers of the higher value, higher R value um, insulation type. So that's what I'm showing there. And then I, in this case, I've kind of as, assumed a, um, a uh, SBS roof membrane. So if it's SBS roof membrane, it'd be a torched on um, type roofing. So you don't want to torch it right onto the insulation. So especially if it's, if you do a layer of styrofoam, but uh, I just put down a, a protection board there basically for that roof membrane to go on. You, you know, depending on your roof membrane that you choose, um, you may or may not have that protection board on there. And you just have to look at your manufacturer's literature to see um, what, what the situation is there. And you'll see here in this TPO roof right here, there's there's no protection board on there because that's pretty much just, it's just rolled out basically that stuff and you don't need a protection board. Whereas an SBS roof, you'd be, you'd have some torches going up there. So that's what I've shown there. Um, you know, I've shown a cant strip here. Again, depends on your roof membrane, whether you need that cant strip or not, but uh, it, it is good practice to do a cant strip there. And, you know, I've shown the roof membrane wrapping up and over the parapet like so. Okay, next here, um, you'll see I've drawn in a little bit different color um, sheathing board there. And that's just because that's usually plywood right there. It's just so you have a better nailer for the, the stud wall of the parapet to nail into. So it's quite common to put down a layer of, uh, you know, like a 600 mil strip along the perimeter of, uh, of a plywood board on top of the decking there. So I've shown that. And uh, really what we're seeing here is a metal stud wall right here. Okay, with a sheathing board on this side and a sheathing board on that side right there. I've also added some insulation here on the vertical face and put another piece of plywood there, which would have to get fastened through that insulation. So you could either do a clip and rail system, depending on how much insulation you had there, you could do a clip and rail system to support that board right there. Or, you know, you could use like a comfort board 80, like a more rigid um, mineral wool, and you could just screw it right through there. With a, with a big washer on it. But the reason I put this insulation there is because um, if you didn't have it, um, you know, if you had a stud wall here and this roof membrane, let's just say, did this and up and over like that, you'd have no insulation there. So, you know, because it's a metal stud um, parapet wall, you kind of get some, some thermal bridging occurring through the metal um, of the studs. So it's it's a nice idea to, to give some protection on that side. Not real common to do this though, but um, I think it's a, it's a good detail to do that. Uh, the parapet cap, um, so you know, it's just a slope plywood cap basically. So there's plywood there, plywood on top, piece of block in there, piece of block in there that's smaller. So you get the slope, you want to make sure you slope your parapet cap into your roof, that's important. And I've also shown some insulation being sandwiched in between there as well. And then, you know, as, as obvious, I've put insulation, a bad insulation in the stud space of the parapet as well. Okay, so on our wall here, the blue line represents the air, vapor, and moisture barrier in our outside insulated wall. Okay, so there's no insulation in the stud space. So outside insulated, so an air, vapor, and moisture barrier. And we've got an air and vapor barrier there. We need to connect this one to that one. And, and this is why I, I prefer doing a, either an infill stud system at a parapet or a semi-bypass system. If we were to extend this stud down below up like that and pull the structure back like this, um, you've got a really tough detail there to get mm -hmm. this air, con air and vapor control layer to that air and vapor control layer over there. So doing a, um, a, a semi-bypass where you're breaking this stud wall to that stud wall makes this detail so much easier because now you can just, you can just lay down a, um, as I've shown here, you can lay down a strip of self-adhering membrane like so. And this one, oops, this one seals to that one and that one overlaps the one on the wall right there. And now you've got that nice continuous air and vapor barrier, very easy to do. And I would just challenge you if you if you do this situation where you pull the structure back 
and you do a bypass stud right there. Take a stab at that and see how you're going to do it. And where you'll end up is you'll probably end up with a situation where you run that air and um, air and vapor barrier like that. And that's not a good idea because then you have a void space in your stud space there. That's probably going to be getting quite cold uh, because it wouldn't have a lot of air circulation into there. But you would probably have some, certainly some warmer, moist air in there that's going to condensate all on these studs in here. So not a good idea to do the, um, in, in my opinion, not a good idea to do the bypass stud system ever, really. I mean, you do get more height out of a parapet without adding steel into the parapet, but just based on the challenges there, I, I think this is the best approach. And if need be, I'd be adding steel in there to make this happen if it was a really tall parapet. So that, that connection was really easy right there. Um, you'll notice I've changed the color of the membrane right here. Okay, so the idea here is um, never have two vapor barriers. You only want to have um, one vapor barrier, so there's always drying to one direction. So, you know, the roof membrane itself is going to act as a vapor barrier. And um, basically, you know, if, if there was a leak in the parapet and moisture got in here, if we end up putting a air vapor and moisture barrier here, and you've got this one here, then there's really no drying potential that way, and there's really no drying potential that way. So we'd be tanking that parapet. So the idea here is that this pink line now just becomes an air and moisture barrier, and it is vapor permeable. It doesn't have a vapor control. And so that way, if, if there was ever some moisture in this parapet, it could dry out that way. Unfortunately, I don't have a real good picture of this, but here's exactly what we're seeing right here in this building. So they have put a air, vapor, and moisture barrier here on the lower wall. And that's the lighter blue one in this case, based on this product. And up at the parapet right there, you can see they've put in a darker blue self-adhering membrane. And so that darker blue one um, from this manufacturer is vapor permeable, so it doesn't have the vapor control qualities. So, so what you're seeing right there is exactly what I've got drawn in this detail right here. So the pink line would be the darker blue membrane and the blue line would be the um, the lighter blue membrane. So again, the air vapor and moisture barrier. This one here is just an air and moisture barrier and that's to allow drying in one direction. So it's quite an important um, piece to, you know, that's the type of stuff you want to identify in a detail and make it very clear that that is different than that. And then you'll get a result just like that. And so, you know, this membrane, obviously, it's it's mainly there for a, um, you know, as your, your backup moisture control layer, so your, your membrane over your sheathing, because uh, this, this is a rain screen system, right? So uh, that's mainly why it's there, but anyways. Uh, so that's what that is. And then, you know, I, I don't like to have, I, I notice a lot of times I'll see that the, the underside of the plywood would be left exposed there, but I don't think that's a good idea. Um, so why not run a, another piece of, um, of that self-adhering membrane just to cover up that that would basically wouldn't be the end of the world if you didn't do it, but it's probably a good idea. Um, you know what? So again, it's a there's a vented cavity behind the brick here that like we looked at before. So there's going to be vent holes at 400 on center at the top of the brick there. Um, I've put in a, a there's a clip right here basically that allows you to fasten where well, you can fasten this clip to the to the wood uh, parapet structure there and then the finished layer of um, of pre-finished flashing can then clip around there and that way you don't see any fasteners on the on the face of the building uh, you know you could you could do um, you don't really have to do the the clip the hidden clip I guess the hidden fastener on the back side because no one's going to see it you could just have the flash in there and then a, a visible um, screw with a gasket on it basically but not a bad idea to do it this way on the on the inside as well so that's what I've shown there and that that's pretty much the detail you know I've got my deflection track right there so again I'm just going to highlight this so everything I've highlighted in purple there basically that stuff there once there's a heavy snowfall on the roof um, that stuff there is this whole structure will deflect down. So again, I put in a deflection track right there, so it's not crushing my my wall, which makes me realize I, for, I forgot my gypsum board on the inside here. So oops, there'd be some gypsum board in here, and you know, ceiling at some some height there. 
Um, so actually, you know, that that's that's what's happening here. Is and I guess I didn't talk about this. Is um, the you know the, the sheathing here I've extended up to this point. So if you remember in the previous um, detail, we put the gap in the sheathing right there for deflection. But in this case, I extended the sheathing up to there. So it's still fastened here, and it would just cantilever up a little bit, and that's so that I can get that break in the sheathing there to get this membrane through there. Okay, so so when this flexes down, um, this piece of sheathing um, do, doesn't go with it. it it's it, it, this this piece will go down, but you've got the gap there to to deal with it basically. So that's kind of that idea there. Yeah, I think that covers everything in that in that detail. Um, you know, it's that's a, that's a pretty sound typical parapet. You know, uh, the whole premise of this conversation was mainly just to show how does this work with the brick. Oh, actually, that reminds me of one thing we could talk about here. Um, so, just going back to what I had highlighted here, see if I can get there. Okay, so I had to draw it again there, but basically all the stuff highlighted in purple there is gonna is gonna flex down. Um, you know, in the in the situation of a of a heavy snowfall so this isn't moving this brick is you know it, it's sitting on a shelf angle down at the second floor so that it's moving it's not moving with the roof basically so that would mean you want to leave room right there which i didn't draw very well but you'd want to make sure you have a um, compressible material in there so i'll just thin this up a little bit here okay so i've just i still got that i still have my membrane there but what I'm going to put in here, and I'll just do it in like a, uh, let's do it in orange right here. You're going to have that foam rod and sealant right here. So that when all this flexes down, the parapet's not pushing on the brick and you neither, you know, probably wouldn't cause cracking in the brick, but it would start to kick your, your parapet cap up. So you, anyways, the point is you want to allow for deflection right there. So that's an important piece that's lacking here. And that would make a pretty good parapet.